Hi everyone, so nice to be with you. Today we're gonna to be talking about becoming a social media ambassador for Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools. My name is Greg Hughes. I work for a company called ClickOn, uh, and we specialize in telling stories on social media. So we work really closely with Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools to share stories about the inclusion movement, to profile individuals who are leaders in the movement towards inclusion. Uh, you might have seen some of our work on social media, whether that's you know Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Uh, we collaborated with Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools on the Moment series, uh, a couple of short films called Clovis Unified and Be the Change. Uh, we also go inside schools and uh, produce some case studies showing the great work of Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools in action. Uh, and then you might have seen um, if your high school uses Edmodo, uh, Inclusion Weekly, which was a special series that we produced for that education platform. Um, so we've been all over social media with our with our work, um, and uh, I'm delighted to be talking to you. You know, not just about telling stories on social media, um, but how you can tell and share your story uh, for the benefit of your personal brand. Um, but also for everything that um, Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools advocates for. So really happy to be with you today. So at ClickOn, we believe that powerful social media is all about great storytelling. Uh, and as I've said, our partnership with Unified Champion Schools allows us to meet really remarkable people who um, are doing great work towards inclusion and tell the world about them. Um, but we really can't do that alone. And we need the help of you and individuals like you to help us spread the word on social media. So like I said, we're gonna be talking about this, uh, this word brand today, um, which you might have some preconceived notions of, of, of what it means, um, but we're gonna sort of broaden the definition and talk about how, again, you can use social media um, to help share um, the stories of the inclusion movement um, that both ClickOn produces and, and that are, are being told, um, you know, even outside of the work we do with Unified Champion Schools. So um, I thought it would be helpful to sort of start with providing a definition, you know, just pulled from the dictionary of, of what brand means. So, um, so here's how the dictionary defines it. So all of the elements that help identify form, create, and influence the way you feel about a person, a product, or an entity. Um, now that's really interesting because, you know, before, you know, I looked at a definition like that, I might have thought that a brand, you know, was just a organization's or a company's logo, right? Um, when I think of Nike and what their brand is, you know, my first thought is always that swoosh, right? You know, that's the thing that we're most familiar with as being their brand. But as the definition tells us, the brand can encompass a lot of different things other than just the logo. So it's also these other elements. So anything that influences the way we feel about a person, a product, or an entity. Now, I'm a long distance runner, and one of my heroes is a Kenyan runner named Elliot Kipchoge, who was the first runner to break the two hour threshold for a marathon, which is just insanely, insanely fast. Um, and he's actually a Nike athlete. Uh, and when I asked myself, you know, what kind of makes up Elliot Kipchoge's brand, um, you know, to me, it's not just the swish, you know, that he might wear on his uniform. Um, it's all of the different things, you know, the work ethic, um, the kind of remarkable um, discipline, um, you know, the speed, the world records, you know, all these things, um, you know, and even he's a, a great humanitarian and a great advocate for his home country of Kenya. Um, so all these different things, you know, also beyond just his work as an athlete, which shapes my perception of him. Um, so similarly, you know, when you think about 
your brand on social media. It's made up of all of these different things, you know, not necessarily, um, you know, where you go to school or, you know, what your name is or the friends you hang out with, um, but also, you know, the issues that you care about, you know, whether it's, um, you know, inclusion or acceptance or meaningful inclusion, whatever it might be, all of these things are contributing to your personal brand. So I think it's helpful to think about, you know, in the same way that Elliot Kipchoge is a hero to me, who are the people that you follow on social media? What makes up their brand to you? Whether it's an actor or an athlete or maybe a CEO of a company um, or even a relative that you, you know, really admire or a mentor. Um, think about the people you follow on social media who you really like and respect and think about all the qualities that make up and influence uh, the reason that you perceive them in a particular way. All of those things are that individual's brand. So what makes up a good personal brand? So a lot of different things. So authenticity, being true to who you are. Personality, not being afraid to show the world your genuine self and all the things that you believe in and hold true to yourself. Encouragement, so engaging with people in a positive way not inflicting negativity um, on social media, whether it's, you know, in comments or whatever it might be. Consistency, so posting regularly. I'm sure a lot of the people that you follow and really respect on social media are people who are posting regularly and building a following as a result of that. And advocacy, talking about the things that you care about the most. So, so important. What are the social media platforms that you use? So if we're talking about you know, posting and translating your brand on social media, I think it's important to also consider you know, what are you posting on the most regularly? You know, where to get started? You know, if you wanted to share more content about Special Olympics or your work as a leader in the inclusion movement, um, there's no wrong answer here. If you gravitate to Instagram, then post more on Instagram. If it's Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it might be. Think about the platforms that you use, or maybe there's something that you don't currently use that you want to delve into. Um, it's a great opportunity to also uh, consider posting across different channels. You know, different people prefer Twitter, different people prefer Instagram, and having a presence on both can also be beneficial. There's so many ways to express your connection to Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools using all of the different elements of a social media profile. So on your left, you'll see um, just some examples from Instagram from, from different individuals who do, I think, a really good job of, of, of conveying that information using all of the elements that are available to them. So things to consider including a link to generationunified.org, which is the Special Olympics Unified Champion School website and your social media profiles, identifying yourself as part of the unified generation in your bios on social media, participating in our monthly challenges, which also always have a social media element to them, um, and sharing content from different channels, whether that's Special Olympics International, Special Olympics North America, or even your state programs. You know, whatever state you might be in, there's a really good chance that there's Special Olympics accounts for those states in particular. So I thought we could look at some examples, you know, um, outside of even just the inclusion movement, showing individuals, you know, kind of, famous individuals who are using their platforms for good. So Shailene Woodley is a great actress and, um, and maybe, you know, when you hear her name, um, you think about that first and foremost as being the most important element of her brand. What you might not know is that she's also a really big advocate for Greenpeace um, and does a lot of great work for them. Uh, so we're going to quickly watch a video and, uh, and illu that illustrates, I think, in a really wonderful way that work that she does and how she's using her platform to advocate for an organization that's really important to her. So let's watch. If we want to survive, we need the ocean. You can save the ocean because you love the ocean, but you can also save the ocean because you love humans. I'm Shailene Woodley. I'm an actor and I'm an advocate for our oceans.
I had a very, I would say, normal suburban childhood. I was always very curious. I was very energetic. A majority of my childhood was spent in the woods near the ocean because I grew up in Los Angeles, so we were lucky. We did have access to camping near the sea. It really shaped who I was as a young person. I think those were the most influential and impactful experiences. And at that young age, it really made me realize how small and insignificant I truly am. And we all, we all are. And that there's a force that's so much bigger than any of us. You see all of these baby little pieces of plastic. It's dead coral. And then somebody forgot to brush their teeth. And so I decided to kill a whale. When I was 18, I moved to Hawaii. Being out there really opened my eyes to the responsibility that we have. It's so crazy because this reef is half dead, but it makes sense because we're not that far from shore. At the end of last year, I felt like I was like, okay, 2019 is gonna be the year of oceans for me. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but the sea was something I wanted to learn more about. As sustainable as I try to be, I still clearly have so much plastic in my life. Plastic razor, plastic face wash, plastic face cream, plastic body wash. Can someone please come up with some alternatives. Actually, my deodorant is the only thing in this bag. Out of all the products I use in my body, my deodorant is the only thing that's actually sustainable because it's made with cardboard. So when Greenpeace reached out to me and asked me to be a part of this experience, I was selfishly so excited because it, it meant that I get to spend a week in the middle of the ocean with scientists, with campaigners, with technology that is able to detect certain microplastics, um, DNA traces from particular animals, things that I would never have access to and to be quite frank, would probably not know how to find on the internet. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my god. Shut the f oh. door. <laughs> my god. I honestly think I'm just excited to learn. One of the beautiful gifts I've been given in my life is a platform, and I don't think I need to be on that platform telling people what to do, but I'd like to think that I could, or hope that I can be a bridge between a base of information, knowledge, and wisdom and a population of people who want access to that knowledge and wisdom but don't necessarily know how. We just put this huge trough in the water. Um, and basically what's gonna happen is over the next 30 minutes, as the water passes through all of these different filters, it's going to collect microplastic and this guy on the very end. If you look at the ocean and we're thinking plastic in terms of big objects and one of the biggest threats is microplastics, which most of us very rarely have access to. There was this trough in the water for about 30 minutes with like a cup size about that big. I mean, look at how small some of these guys are. We're going up in numbers of plastic yeah. with every trial that we do. Yeah, it seems like that. I mean, we've even got these huge chunks of plastic that were in this trough, so we're seeing new stuff in every trough. Wow. Was this something that was collected in the trough? Yeah. so much being out on the Sargasso. We found a piece of microplastic once every three seconds. And this is just skimming the surface of the water. So if you consider that we had about five miles of depth below us, it challenged me to look at things in a new way. What are the questions I'm not asking? What are the solutions I'm not seeking? I love the ocean because I just love. <laughs> 
I've never found a better healer in my life. I've never found a better therapist in my life. I've never found something more forgiving and also something more unforgiving. You don't have to be on a Greenpeace boat to make a huge difference for this planet. The power really does lie in our own hands and it lies in holding our corporations and our governments accountable um, to the change that we want to make within our communities. My greatest hope for the future is that we learn to listen. We listen to the ocean, which will make us care about her. We listen to each other, which will make us care about each other. Yeah, I guess my, my greatest hope for the future is that we just get out of our own damn way. What's yours? I really love that quote. 2019 will be the year of oceans for me. I think a great challenge for us is to think about how we can make 2020, 2021, the year of inclusion for us in the same way that Shailene Woodley has challenged herself to make the year, the year of oceans for her. So think about what are your messages as a leader in this inclusion movement? What are your goals as a leader? And how can that contribute to the content that you put out on social media? Here's another video example that I thought would be good to delve into. So this is Jamie Margolin, who is a climate activist. And you can see on the left side, she does a great job of using the bio elements on Instagram to articulate all the different things that make up her brand. So that's just a really powerful example. But let's look at this video, which also I think does a really good job of showcasing the things that she really cares about and, and likes to talk about on social media. We are exhausted because we have tried everything. I want the entirety of Congress, in fact, the whole U.S. government, to remember the fear and despair that my generation lives with every day, and I want you to hold on to it. I still experience grave anxiety about experiencing another climate-driven disaster like Superstorm Standy and the harm that these storms will have on myself and my family. As someone who already struggles with anxiety and struggles with depression from my understanding of climate change and what I experience, Watching our government knowingly perpetuate the climate crisis is extremely overwhelming. I wrestle with this anxiety every day, from the moment that I wake up in the morning to the moment I fall asleep at night. The fact that you are staring at a panel of young people testifying before you today, pleading for a livable earth, should not fill you with pride. It should fill you with shame. Is this the future that we have to look forward to? So again, another great example. And you don't necessarily have to have a highly produced video uh, in order to convey those things that you're passionate about. So, you know, consider just turning the camera on yourself, whether that's, you know, for Instagram stories or Snapchat or TikTok, and talk about the things that you care about um, in a similar way. It doesn't have to be, you know, a polished video to the same extent that this one was. In the same way that Jamie is an advocate for climate, you are an advocate for us. So always keep that in mind whenever you're posting on social media. Um, you are that. And again, let's make 2020 and 2021 the year of inclusion. So there's so many different ways that you can help us out, you know, some of which I've covered already in this presentation, but we also have the social media ambassador guide, which provides some tips, some tricks, you know, to engage with us from day to day, month to month. Um, and, uh, and there's a checklist, you know, that can help you, uh, you know, make it really easy if you don't necessarily know where to start. A lot of what I've talked about is going to be written down there. So that, PDF is to be used for your benefit. So let's challenge ourselves. So I love checklists. I think they're a great way to kind of keep track of our progress. And I thought it would be good to reiterate just a couple of things that you can do uh, today, tomorrow, to be a powerful social media advocate for Special Olympics and Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools. So again, include a link to generationunified.org in your social media profile. 
identify yourself as part of the unified generation in your bios on social media. Sign up to receive alerts from generationunified.org. So we'll let you know when there are new videos posted that you might want to share. We'll let you know when there are new monthly challenges. Uh, participate in those challenges and share your results on social media. Share content, you know, follow all of our channels, whether it's Special Olympics International, Special Olympics North America, your state programs, your high schools, your colleges, whatever it might be, um, and get inspiration from what they're posting. And this is a new one, but we just launched a digital version of our inclusion tiles on generationunified.org. Play, share your results, and challenge your friends to do the same. Thanks so much for tuning in. Looking forward to seeing your work as social media ambassadors. Thanks so much.